In the last video, I tracked the alignment from Mashhad, the capital of Iran's Razavi Khorasan province, the second largest city in modern Iran, and at one time a major oasis on the ancient Silk Road, across the Elbers Mountains and Mount Damavand, the highest peak in Iran, through Sari, the capital of Iran's Mandarazan province, and situated between the slopes of the Elbers Mountains and the Caspian Sea, to Tabriz, a historical capital of Iran and capital of the East Azerbaijan province, and ending at Lake Urmia in Iran, the sixth largest salt lake on earth. My name is Michelle Gibson. I am picking up the alignment in Van, the name of a city and province in eastern Turkey, and on the eastern shore of a lake of the same name. Van has a long history as a major city. It was the capital of the kingdom of Urartu of ancient Armenia from the 9th century BC to the 6th century BC when it was called Tushpa. Tushpa was situated on the steep-sided bluff now known as Van Fortress or Castle, Van Kalesi in Turkish, on the top, which is similar in appearance and location to the Edinburgh Castle, said to be somewhere around 1100 years old in Scotland, on top of Castle Rock, which is called the plug of an extinct volcano. Van Castle was said to have been built in the 9th century BC by King Sarduri I, the third monarch of Urartu, who was said to have moved the capital of Urartu to Van. King Sarduri used the title of King of the Four Corners of the World, a title of great prestige claimed by powerful monarchs in ancient Mesopotamia. As a matter of fact, there was a time when Armenia was considered the center of the world, as depicted in this map. So, in the case of Van Castle, almost 3,000 years ago, we were capable of building massive stone fortresses on top of solid rock. Not an easy location to build on by any stretch of the imagination. And apparently working with huge stone blocks was not a problem. This is described as a bronze sphinx dated to the 7th century BC and said to be either from Tushpa or Toprakale, southwest of Lake Van. Some interesting things I found about Toprakale when I looked it up is that there is a high fortress there as well, and I find the flat landscape surrounding the hill and fortress to be noteworthy. And it is known for being the place where the Toprakale shuttle was found, which was taken out of display in Istanbul because some believed it to be a hoax. Others believe the Toprakale shuttle to be over 2,000 years old. I think it is important to spend some time looking at the history of this geographical area because it seems to have great importance. What was this place historically? Who were the people of R? They identify with that eight-pointed star symbol as well that I keep seeing everywhere. Including, but far from limited to, the Gumti Monument in Faisalabad, Pakistan, and at the Imam Riza Shrine in Mashhad, Iran. I also found this six-pointed star tetrahedron carved in stone on a church in Armenia's independent republic of Artsakh. also known as the Star of David and the Merkaba, the geometric shape of the human light body. Some psychically gifted people are able to see the human aura or energy body, but most are unable to see it without the help of Curlian aura photography. This is because the natural psychic abilities of humanity have been deliberately deactivated by not teaching us about them and by active efforts to close down our primary psychic organ, the pineal gland, also known as the third eye, by doing things like fluoridating water supplies, which leads to the calcification of the pineal gland. Back to the Lake Van region and historical Armenia. The Armenian alphabet at one time was hieroglyphic, 
And in 405 AD, the introduction of the Armenian alphabet still in use today was credited to Mesrop Mashtots and Isaac of Armenia. Isaac, a prominent Old Testament name in Armenia. We are told that the Armenian alphabet was carved into stone in 2005 by Armenian architect Jim Torosyan in Artashavan, Armenia, on the eastern slope of Mount Aragats, on the northern end of the Ararat Plain, near Mashtot's final resting place, to celebrate the 1600th anniversary of its creation. Mount Ararat, the legendary landing place of Noah's Ark, was located in Urartu and now is part of modern Turkey. The Sumerians called Ararat Arata, and they tell of this land of their ancestors in the Armenian highlands in their epic poems of Gilgamesh and Arata, which also both describe a great flood which fell from the highlands of Armenia. The ancient metallurgical and astronomical center of Metsamor, near Armenia's modern-day capital of Yerevan, gives its name to the Metsamor civilization, believed by some to be the world's first civilization. This is the Karahunga stone circle in southern Armenia, an astronomical observatory marking the movement of the sun, moon, and stars. It is believed to be 7,500 years old. Great Britain is much better known for its standing stone circles with archaeoastronomical correlations, like what is shown on this megalithic map of England. And of Scotland. The two photographs on the left show Armenian stone crosses, and on the right are two stone crosses found along the River Leith in Edinburgh, Scotland. Not identical, but similar stylizations. Interestingly, I found this map referencing the Kingdom of Iberia in Armenia's part of the world, the Transcaucasia, a geographical region in the southern Caucasus Mountains that corresponds to modern Georgia, Armenia, and Azerbaijan. I knew about Spain and Portugal being called Iberia and occupying what is called the Iberian Peninsula. I know there is a province of Galicia in Spain and the region of Galatia in Turkey. And there was a kingdom of Galicia and Lodomeria located historically between what is now Poland and Ukraine and which was dissolved in 1918. This research led me to this map of the Celtic world, circa 400 BC. How and why did the history of this part of the world get so obscured? What are we not being told? And when was what was historically part of Armenia absorbed into modern Turkey? What happened? This is what we are told about Turkey's history. Ancient Asia Minor, or Anatolia, consisted of the majority of modern-day Turkey, which is a country in both Asia and Europe. What is now modern Turkey was once part of the Byzantine Empire. Until the Seljuk Turks started coming into Anatolia in the 11th century, they defeated the Byzantines in battle in 1071, and the reign of the Seljuk Turks was said to symbolize the founding of Turkey. The Seljuk Turks fell to Mongol invasions, which started in 1241. The Mongols ruled as the Ilkhanate in Anatolia between 1243 and 1335. Then the Ottoman Empire was founded at the end of the 13th century in northwestern Anatolia and existed as a vast empire and center of interactions between East and West until the end of World War I, when it was defeated as an ally of Germany and occupied by Allied forces. At this time, the Ottoman Empire was partitioned and lost its Middle East holdings, 
which were divided between the Allied forces. Thus, at the end of World War I, the victorious powers sought to divide up the Ottoman Empire, and the 1920 Treaty of Sevres promised to maintain the existence of the Armenian Republic and to attach the former territories of Ottoman Armenia to it. Ottoman Armenia was referred to as Wilsonian Armenia because the new borders were to be drawn by U.S. President Woodrow Wilson. The Treaty of Severus never came into effect because it was rejected by the Turkish National Movement, which used the occasion to declare itself as the rightful government of Turkey. Turkish nationalist forces invaded Armenia in 1920 from the east, ultimately forcing most of the Armenian military forces to disarm, cede back the former Ottoman lands granted to Armenia by the treaty, and to give up Wilsonian Armenia. And during the same time frame, the Soviet 11th Army invaded Armenia and ultimately took complete control of it in 1921. Thus, the Turkish War of Independence, initiated under the leadership of Mustafa Kemal Ataturk against the occupying powers, resulted in the abolition of the monarchy in 1922 and the establishment of the Republic of Turkey in 1923. Ataturk was the first president of the new republic, moving the country's seat of power from Istanbul to Ankara. Obviously, this region of historical Armenia was highly prized, and its people were persecuted, and many were killed. There's a lot more to look at here, but I'm going to move on to the next place on the alignment. The next place I'm going to look at is what is called the Valley of the Fairy Chimneys in Cappadocia, a historical region of central Anatolia, known for its unique cultural and historical heritage. These fairy chimneys are in Gorim National Park, part of the rock sites of Cappadocia UNESCO World Heritage Site. I find it noteworthy that shapes like these are found around the world, including what are called hoodoos, in Bryce Canyon in southwest Utah, in Alberta's Drumheller Badlands in Canada, the Torre Torre in Huancayo, Peru, in Renan, Italy, in Zaragoza, Spain, in Usain, Switzerland, and in the Puy de Dome region of central France. Here are more fairy chimneys in the Passabog Valley of Gorim National Park in Cappadocia. So we are told that these phallic shapes were all created by natural geologic forces? Okay, well maybe, but I really don't think so. Besides so-called fairy chimneys, the region of Cappadocia has been determined to have 40 underground cities, of which six are open to the public. The underground city of Tatlarin, considered one of the most important of Cappadocia's underground cities, discovered in 1975. Darin Kuyu, an ancient, deep, multi-level underground city said to be large enough to shelter 20,000 people together with their livestock and food supply and open to visitors in 1969. The underground city of Osconic, discovered in 1972, which had a water well, pipe communication system, winery, and moving stone doors. And there's Mazi, underground city, open to visitors in 1995. K. Mockley Underground City opened to the public in 1964. And K. Mockley is the widest underground city. 
And the last one that is open to the public is Gazimir Underground City, which was discovered in 2006. So not only is all of this massive stonework going on underneath the surface of Cappadocia, it was also going on above ground. Cappadocia is known for its cave homes and cave hotels. And places like the Keswick Monastery in Cappadocia appear to be carved right out of the solid rock. Or was it built to look like it was? The tourism center of Urgup is not far from Keswick Monastery, and here are dwellings found there. And then there is Uchasar, located on the edge of Garim National Park, with its 197-foot or 60-meter-high castle mountain, crisscrossed by passageways, and was said to have a thousand people living inside it at one time, but apparently not anymore. I'm going to end this video here and pick up the alignment where it crosses the Anatolian Plateau in the next video. Many thanks to Stuffed Beagle Productions for creating new opening and closing sequences, for piercing the veil of illusion, and adding music to them.